Yo, Devon from the future here. And before we jump into it, the currency you're seeing in the title is TT currency. So if you're not from Trinidad, don't even worry about the currency conversion, dog. I just appreciate you being here, vibes with me. But welcome to episode one of building a twenty-five thousand dollar gaming PC. Although by the time we done it, kind of get out of hand and turn out to be a good bit more than that. But we we'll stick to that figure for now. One thing we're not sticking on though is introducing the sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Digicel Plus. This could be you. Except that's not actually you. This is actually you. Sign up for Digicel Plus Smart Class Package today to get 100 megabits per second upload and download speed. Stop letting lag and bad internet make you lose. Disclaimer, Digicel Plus will not improve your skill level. That one is all on you. <laughs> back to the video. All right, and we're back. So my main form of work is content creation, whether it be for me or other companies as well. And as far back as I can remember, is usually a MacBook Pro that is my workhorse. It originally started with this 13-inch MacBook Pro, non-retina. <coughs> but um, yeah. This had an uh, internal hard drive and 4 gigs of RAM out the box and I took it up a little bit to make sure it's a little more workhorse friendly. So we switched out the hard drive with the SSD, we switched out the 4 gigs of RAM with 16 gigs and this became like the ultimate editing machine. I was editing 4K videos, easy peasy on this. Like if you have a mid-2012 MacBook dog, those two upgrades, trust me, that's what you need to do. Jump forward 3 to 4 years later and the workhorse became this 2014. 15 inch MacBook Pro. Honestly, I didn't really have a reason to upgrade except for the fact that I've bid on eBay a ridiculously low price and I actually win. So, so I got this 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro with 16 gigs RAM and a 500 gig SSD for around 7800 US. Once I start using it, I realized that Retina is the way and I couldn't even think of going back to that non Retina MacBook Pro. So I palm it off from my fiance. That's her problem now. <laughs> I'll be honest though, I have zero complaints about this device except for the fact that it comes with like piece of the screen smudged up and missing some screws and stuff. But I mean, currently complain especially for the price you get it for. Um, the thing is though, I want to branch out into doing some other stuff. So like for example, one of those things is streaming on Twitch. And being able to play current gen games would definitely be real, real, real vibes for that. Not just for Twitch, but just like when I want to be home and just vibes and zone out and play some game and thing. Um, so... We built a gaming PC dog flashback to a few weeks ago, but keep in mind Devon a few weeks ago thought that this would cost no more than like 14 to 15,000 TT. <laughs> budget wise, I don't really have a specific budget, I just try not to mash up my bank account too much. But I also don't want to skimp on anything, especially when coming to aesthetics now boy, because a big, a huge part of the PC is to make sure it look real good in the background of videos and stuff. So aesthetics important. Trust me, I'm real, real particular about how this look. So I, I'm trying to play the balancing game between budget and aesthetics. I, I'll try my best, no promises, dog, but we'll try. We <laughs> We'll try to find the perfect balance. I should also mention the fact that my workhorse is a Mac and my editing software of choice is Final Cut Pro. Um, and as a man not really on that switching to Premiere Pro thing, we're gonna attempt to turn this into a fully working Hackintosh with FaceTime, iMessage, AirDrop and all that good stuff working. It sounds like a stretch dog, I don't know if it's gonna work. Hopefully, fingers crossed dog. The good thing is that we decided to do this now before I even buy any parts, that way we could actually choose parts that we know compatible with macOS. It should make the process a little bit easy. Alright, so for the case, definitely not even a ch not even one percent chance, dog. One time you're gonna add the white NZXT H510 to the car. Now I know everybody on the mother, father, brother, sister, dog got frog this bill. In this case, I don't really business, dog. Me really care what that. It's just exactly what I looking for aesthetics wise, and I happy with it. I cool the H510. I is kind of really iron, but let me not sky the budget up too high quite yet, uh, dog. If it wasn't for the express couriers, dog, I, I don't even know if I woulda. I Pull the trigger on this PC build because I'd be way too scared to clear stuff through customs. But with them, I know I'm safe for sure now, boy. Don't boy. So if, if only not sign up with them using them as a skybox yet, you're missing out, though. You could be stress free like me. <laughs> Alright, back, back to the case. So the H510 actually comes with two fans, uh, two 120mm fans, and they both black. No RGB. <laughs> we need to fix that for sure. So we're gonna add a 120mm and a 140mm NZXD fan as well, with the RGB, of course. To the cart to make sure we have the largest size fans that the case could fit with the RGB in it. Speaking of fans and cooling, I know this case is infamous with terrible airflow apparently, so you're definitely gonna need that all in one liquid cooler. Um, I already have my eyes on this. This is like one of the staple things I had in mind for the look of the bill, and we're definitely going with the NZXT Kraken X53. So, uh, I'm balancing right now between the X53 and the Z53, one of those have a LCD display on the actual cooler, so I can have like my logo inside the build. But I've been watching a few reviews and I see people getting a lot of connectivity issues and all of that with them, and um. It, it, the blacks don't look black black. I assume because it's an LCD display and not AMOLED. And I, I kind of not really on that. So, to be honest, I know it would definitely be cooler. No pun intended. 
I think for now I just feel in the X53 way more for this build and obviously we need to get the RGB version because why even do it if you're not getting the RGB version? And obviously you're not gonna see it in the case because the case is solid but just rest my dog, I don't tell you what to do with your life, don't tell me what to do with mine except for right now I tell you what to do with your life, the thumbs up button on the sub right here, fix up. Of course you wanna check to make sure it's compatible with 2066 socket and boom! Yeah man, we're in a gear, you can imagine if I'd order everything and realize the cooler wasn't compatible with this. <laughs> That'd be stress for the board. I'm looking at a few options for some reason. I thought I would have like a wider selection with the X299 boards, but I guess I don't. The best bang for the buck right now looking like the Asus Prime X299 board, so we're going with that. Um, you cannot be forced to go with it because everything else, every other option is at least a hundred US dollars more. I know that now, boy. So <laughs> Asus Prime X299, it is. We're going with 32 gigs of RAM to start with. If the whole Hackintosh thing work out perfectly and the, the whole process with Final Cut stable and everything and seamless, I'll probably max out the RAM in the future. But for now, we're going with 32. And I have a few RGB RAMs I was looking at, and I think the one I settled on is this Corsair Vengeance. Um, it, it very diffuse, it's very minimal, it's very modern looking, and not too loud and out there. You're not gonna look like a Crayola vomit all over the inside of the, um, the PC build. It'll actually look clean and tasteful. So we go in with a 32 gig kit, and of course, 2600 megahertz because why not dog? Why not? For storage, you're gonna hit it with two Samsung 980 1TB NVMe SSDs, one for Windows. One for Mac, boom, done, easy peasy. For the power supply, we're gonna go with the NZXT C750. Um, I don't really have a reason why I choose this one other than Amazon recommended to me. I already have a bunch of NZXT parts, so why not? And a very, very, very crucial part of this entire build, a tiny little part that's very, very crucial, is this Wi-Fi card from Fenvi. So yes, the board comes with a Wi-Fi card, which is perfectly functional, except it's not compatible with Mac OS. This Fenvi card is actually fully compatible with macOS natively, most importantly, which means airdrop, handoff, everything going to be working perfectly, smoothly, no work required from me. Just put the card in and boom, safe. Final thing to wrap up here on Amazon, we're going to do some white power supply cable extensions as well as some white sleeving for the AIO hoses. Say it with me, aesthetics. <laughs> oh shoot, I clean forget I do have a wired USB keyboard to access my BIOS. So I'm just going to throw a random one in the cart. Um, I see everybody talking about the Royal Clutch RK68. So I guess what better time to try than right now. We're going to throw it in the cart and the fact that it's white and RGB, it fit right into the entire build like a puzzle. <sighs> Here the thing now though, the limit for the US amount I can spend on my card for the month is way, 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 way less than the price of my card right now. So I'm definitely going to have to call in a favor. I'm going to send my bridge in the money. I'm going to wire transfer it to him. Once the transfer and everything cleared, I'll give him my Amazon info. He'll log in and check out for me. If you do have bridges, you can just casually give your Amazon login to where you have the wrong bridges though. <laughs> All right, time for the good stuff, the GPU. So like I said before, this is a kind of peculiar build. We need two GPUs, one for Windows, one for Mac. Reason being that Mac OS doesn't support every single GPU out there. However, the RX 580 is like the staple Hackintosh card, compatible out of the box, natively you don't need to do anything. Just plug the graphics card and you're good to go. So I'm gonna search Facebook and hopefully find a RX 580, a used one for a good price. <sighs> a good price already exists with a GPU right now if you know the struggle, so. I'll try my best, I'll scour the whole of Facebook Marketplace and see if I could find one. I've definitely not seen anything here, dog. So, um, I feel like we're holding an L on that for now. <laughs> but for Windows, I have no idea what I'm going to do yet, though. Um, I saw somebody post a 3060. I'm not too happy about it. I saw somebody post one, so I'm going to at least message him and see who's he's seen. It's not in the country yet, which means I have to wait on it. But the person from Trinidad, it's a complicated situation, dog. I'm just going to message them, see how soon they're going to be here, and see if I can get it. Yo, bro. All right, so luckily enough, the, the guy with the 360 is somebody who's watched these videos, and you say he willing to knock a thousand dollars off the price, which is, mm, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you, bro. So just to collect the CPU tomorrow, I mean, I get it, dog. Ha <laughs> ha. So much updates, dog. I don't know where to start. First of all, I completely ignore the 3060 and again a 6700 XT. It right over there, I'm not gonna show it because we're keeping it for episode two. So that's an idea. CPU guy, he fall off the face of the earth, so I don't know what's going on with that right now. That's kind of up in shambles. And let me not even get started on the whole wire and monitor bridge renting dog, because the amount was way too much to send in one day. So I had to send it over two days and then wait for it to clear. We do have a server lining though. That two days is today. So we're gonna make the order right now. <sighs> I don't think it could get any worse, dog. I really don't think it could get any worse. Up to like 20 or 30 minutes ago, everything was perfect. Just went to place the order and the RAM raised by a whopping 50 US. Which means now I need to go transfer more money. Wait for it to clear. Then place the order. 
All right, so we're here one day later. Um, the RAM price is the same. You're probably thinking everything cool, eh? So when I was about to order, the, the board went out of stock. Great. Remember that same board I was dodging for the 150 US more? I don't think we have... We, we do. I don't think we have much of a choice anymore. The good thing though is I see somebody do a hack and touch build with the exact same board. So I'm sure it's compatible. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go with the Gigabyte Designate EXX299 for $150 more. Okay, so I thought it would be a two day max process, end up being over a week. <sighs> Alright, few updates. Everything ordered and on the way, thankfully. But all that back and on frustration before I kind of trip off dog and I just I switch the H510 to the H510i so now we have the lights we have the fan slash LED hub included in the back and all of that switch the C750 to a C850 because I saw a recommendation on Amazon for around a similar price come on man you can't, really, I can't go wrong you can't really blame me there and I did find an RX580 uh, the person who had it before I uh, assume was mining with it so uh, fingers crossed hopefully this goes smoothly right there I'm not going to show you it still make sure to come back for episode 2 for the unboxing of every single thing once they get here uh, i'm gonna run the 580 and see what's going on and see if i need to change the thermal pace or the thermal pads or anything i'm not gonna do it quite yet i'm gonna run it see how everything go on in the event we have some trouble then, I, then i'll deal with with that back and all. That's, that's a whole next scene so now we have one final step which is collecting the cpu and we're gonna do that right now <laughs> In hand, dog. In hand. So once everything else reached, the back and I could start. Huge shout out again to the series sponsor, Digicel Plus. Be sure to click the link below in the description to sign up. All the information is there as well. Huge shout out to the Express Couriers as well. Links below in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget, mash up the thumbs up button. Mash up the sub button. Make sure you're here for episode 2, where we unbox every single part. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I just feel so good. good.